All right, so I see a lot of comments in the videos my buddy posts about me starting my dumpster business. And, uh, you know, when I started my channel, I saw a lot of people say, oh, this isn't a side hustle. You know, it takes $70,000 to start, you know, with the new truck, the trailer, everything. You know, daddy's money this, daddy's money that. Well, here, guys, I really want to set the record straight. I want to show you how I actually started my dumpster business. And before I did that, I actually started investing in real estate. And that's actually what kind of set me up to be able to start a dumpster business. So this is actually the first property I ever bought. This is out in St. Louis, Missouri. It is a duplex right off the hill. If anybody knows anything about St. Louis, I actually am about to sell this place. So I'm out here spreading a little bit of gravel just to clean the place up a little bit. One less thing the buyer would have to do. But if anybody knows anything about the hill in St. Louis, it's a great neighborhood. People love it. Uh, it's the Italian neighborhood, as some people would say. So this is actually a duplex. So this is the first unit down here. As you can see, it's pretty small. So I actually, I'm not gonna go into it. Um, I'm gonna respect the current tenant's privacy uh, that is actually occupying the place. I did a little bit of touch up work, but I'm not gonna go through the place and you know show off all of his stuff. But this is actually the first unit I lived in. I actually bought this property with a loan right out of, right when I got out of college. And I did it with three and a half percent down FHA loan. Um, and if anybody knows anything, that is the easiest way to get into a house. You know, three and a half percent down payment. I actually had the seller pay my closing costs. And up here is actually the nicer part of the house. It's two stories and it's a nice brick building. This was actually built in the 1800s. I love this house. It's actually killing me to let it go. But at the end of the day, um, I want to move the money somewhere else and start something else. So I got the keys, got the place open. So this is actually an upstairs unit. I didn't do too much to this when I bought the place. I basically bought this place and I moved right in. Everybody loves the spiral staircase and you know the barn door. It had a nice kitchen in it and everything. And then you walk over here, it had a washer dryer combo, good bathroom, and then actually up the stairs was the bedroom. But the biggest thing I did here was I ended up renting this for 1250 bucks a month. 1250 bucks. My monthly payment was an even thousand dollars. So I was living downstairs for free and this place even basically covered my utilities. Uh, funny thing is when I moved into this, that place downstairs, it was a pretty big risk. I had very little money in my bank account, like maybe 150 bucks. It was probably one of the riskiest moves I've made. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. Uh, after I bought the place, uh, the hot water heater broke and I couldn't afford to fix it. So I literally lived in the downstairs unit without a hot water heater for about six months. And in St. Louis, that was actually through November and I had no hot water. I would literally wash my face as quickly as I can, rinse off, and then I would take a shower at the gym. So this place set me up though, because after I moved out of this place, um, it was perfect. I ended up moving to Springfield, Missouri, and I ended up renting a, or actually buying another duplex with another FHA loan because if you actually look at the rules and regulations, you can have two, more than one FHA loan as long as you move more than 100 miles away. My wife got a job in Springfield, Missouri, so I moved 100 miles away and I rented the downstairs unit. That then started to rent for $550, $600 a month, depending on which year it was. And I was cash flowing this place. So, uh, and I also, when I moved into that place, that was the place that needed the most amount of work. So when I sell this, I should have a nice amount of equity. And I actually ended up moving away from Springfield. My wife and I finally stopped doing the house hacking thing. We moved into our own place. I sold that place in Springfield and I cashed in over $60,000 in equity in one year. Uh, this I kind of hope to do the same on. So that just gives you an idea. There was no daddy's money involved in starting my business or doing my rental properties. It all started with me taking a huge risk by pouring everything I had into an FHA loan, uh, doing a house hack, and then from there, I just slowly started to accumulate, accumulate more property, more equity, and I just poured it into bigger, better things that cash flowed more. And that's how I did it. That's how I can afford that truck out there. That's how I can afford my trailers. That's how I can afford some of the other rental property I have. 
And actually that influenced my dad and he went out and he actually bought uh, a couple of rentals of himself. My brother ended up getting into the rental game and I mean, we're all in it now. And it, it's awesome. I can't, I can't not recommend it to somebody. If you could do it, I would definitely do it. But don't let people always just, you know, assume they know your whole story because it, you know, it's not as easy as it looks. It's not just like, oh, you go to the bank, you get approved for a loan, and that's how it goes down. It's you, you get your your first apartment, and it's just cash flow and money, you're putting it in your pocket. No, the start sucks. It's hard. You're gonna want to quit. But after you get past that, all those problems you thought were so big before become so small later. So just keep the hard work up, keep grinding, build your business, build your investments, keep going, guys. Have a good one. You a chronological order of how I got started. I basically, I bought this place. I lived in it for a little while. Like I said, I moved out, bought another duplex. After that duplex, I bought my own home. So now I have four units renting at that point. From there, I sold one of the duplexes there. I actually had a single family home I bought that year too. Uh, that was a quick flip I did. So I had, at that point, I had five doors that I was renting out. They were all cash flowing, so I was making uh, a little bit of money that it was just kind of accumulating over time. Uh, from there, I actually sold uh, the duplex and single family home that was in Springfield, Missouri. So I ended up with a nice stack of cash. Uh, my wife and I bought a house. I then bought a six unit apartment building where we moved to, uh, and that actually is my best cash flowing place now. And at the same time, uh, shortly after that, so all that stuff's cash flowing still, and I started my dumpster business. And from there, my dumpster business now is what is cash flowing the most. So what I'm doing is I'm accumulating that money and I'm pouring that back into a uh, future rental property. So let your money work for you. Don't work for the money. That's the best advice I can give anybody. If it cash flows, don't go spend it on something else. Find something to invest it in. And then long-term holds. That's the goal. Don't want to work your whole life. You want something that's just going to continue to pay you when you're too tired to work anymore and that's what i'm working on now so best of luck to all of you guys like i said keep up the hard work and do what you can